Diaz Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. With crudo, with a little bit of hangover. Back at it like a motherfucking smack addict. And as you can tell by today's thumbnail, we're talking about something serious here. We're talking about something I've been through. Uh, uh, wars that I've been through, things that I've seen in a menudo style in direct fashion. We're talking about red on red or what is considered Norteños on Norteño violence. Now, growing up in the city of Merced, the Central Valle, I've seen a lot of it. I grew up with it. I was around it. There was always this type of animosity, this type of hate, this type of, of envy or whatever you want to call it, turmoil between my barrio, the west side of Merced, dead end, and the other side of Merced, which would be considered the north side. Um, now, these barrios are all the same. At the end of the day, every barrio in every town in every city, so in every land, right, are pretty much comprised of individuals that are in need or seeking canalismo, respect, power, uh, bolsitas, saca la bolsita, right? Everybody is trying to um, just maintain for their neighborhood. Now, some people represent because it's generational. Their fathers and their grandfathers before them did it. Some people represent because sounds good. They watched American Me on TV. Orale, are you coming out? See, one is them coming out, right? Some are coming out and they want to get down like that. And some, they do it because there is no other option. There are, they have no friends, you know, they're out there seeking guidance. They're out there seeking the familia that probably they don't have at home. There's a lot of reasons behind why people join gangs and why people do what they do. But at the end of the day, um, they're there now. So I can't take it from them. But I will say this, red on red became pretty, pretty prevalent during the 90s. During that era, man, when motherfuckers would get bit up by a pit bull terror, right? It was just going down. And I know that in Merced, it's, it just started suddenly. It started over beefs that were more personal, per se, than Vato's hating on each other. You know, we felt always that the North Side was hating on us, and they always felt like we were taking it personal because they were gaining status, they were gaining soldados, they were gaining manpower, they were getting deeper. And in a way, the wind was blowing, we were, right? Um, but that was just my personal experience, my personal town, Merced. You know, it was going on in Sanjo, Salas, uh, Stockton, you know, those, uh, Sacramento. They're different. Everybody gets smacked over there. And every different city throughout Northern California, you know, as far as Southern California, well, traditionally, you already know the get down there, man. Barrio versus Barrio, turf warfare. Um, so that's, that's been going on since back in the 30s. They ain't playing over there. But I know as far as Northern California, and that's what I'm going to speak on today, uh, the Norteño on Norteño violence definitely was really kicking up dust in the 90s. Now, I could sit here and I could tell you war story after war story after war story of going at it with the rivals at that time, which were the other side of the town. And so, okay, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And in that fashion. Um, but I remember getting out of the California Youth Authority um, in 1996, after being down, you know, since early 90, uh, since 91, 92. And I remember looking around me and wondering, okay, what was this all about? What were we going to do? How were we going to gangbang? How were we going to proceed in accomplishing our set goal, which was equality and which was pushing the Northern agenda? Because that's what I was down for. So I was going to have my Mongolian whipping back and forth. I was getting out there with Ben Davis creased up like a motherfucker. And I was ready to gangbang, but I didn't know exactly who I was going to gangbang on. See, at that time, we didn't have many Southerners or, or Southsiders in Merced. What we had were just other Northanos and they were doing their thing on the other side of town. But quietly as Captain, I was already up on game and up to par because I knew that we didn't get along with them. No, I didn't know the reasoning behind it and I didn't give a fuck, right? At the end of the day, I'm going to rock with the homies no matter what. Whatever they wanted to do, I was going to do that too. It wasn't that I was no follower and I was just taking dictation from whatever some Bob also said. Charlie, but I knew my audio for one reason or another had came to some type of disagreement with this other audio. And so okay, let the bell be the reason where we're going to handle our business on site. See, it got to the point of on site. It wasn't necessarily okay. Yeah, we don't like them dudes, but they're, they're Norteños as well. So it is what it is. It was never that. It was if we see the bottles, smack them on site. 
even more so than Sureños and Perros. Arr, bulldogs, right? Oh my. And it was a trip because the reasoning behind this was we felt that they posed more of a potential threat to our safety and security because they were Norteños as well. They knew the wigglization. They knew the get down. See, basically we were all the same. It was like a mirror image of what we had going on. And we knew, that, we knew that they were down to get us just as quick as we were down to get them. But let's talk about it. Growing up in the Central of Ayan, a small little city, we all went to school with each other. These same guys that we were headhunting, these same guys that we were opposing, these same guys that were opposing us, we all went to elementary school together. I knew those babosos and their such guy probably beat up some of their dads. At the same time, they might have beat up mine, can't call it. But at the end of the day, we were all the exact same. But we weren't going out. Why? Because we had pride. We were proud of the neighborhood we were from. So I was going to the imaginary lines that were drawn in the ground that said that that was dead end. That was our hood, right? We're better than you and you're not better than us. This was our mindset. We were going to go ahead and handle ours. And in the end, we were just killing our own people. You know, we were fucking oppressing our own. These vatos, if we got incarcerated, would be right there beside us, right there in the county jail, eating the same damn sopa. So let's get break it in half. Can I get my issue? Separate mine from yours. You're from the West anyways, right? Boom. So it made no sense. So I know getting out of the youth authority, um, I had the mindset that it was Norte above all else. Okay, this is what was instilled in me. This is what was taught to me. This is what I pushed while I was in there. Um, you got to understand, I kicked it with a lot of fucking homeboys from a lot of different cities. And we all went through some hardships together. We were canal, uh, canales forever. You know, soy canales forever. We went through some bad shit. You know, I was placed down south and I went through a lot of oppression. I went through a lot of depression. So I went through a lot of compression. Let's just say it was rough. You know, it was hard out there for Pim. Hey, mine. Hey, mine. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and need my mind, right? You know, separate minds from yours, mine. Don't, don't, you know, don't, I need that mic, mine. You don't have to do what you have to do. It was, it was rough. So I was under the awareness and the assumption that all homeboys were of equal status. Everybody was the same. So I remember getting out of the California Authority and being told, hey, Charlie Holmes, we don't fuck with Laugh Pro Locals. We don't rock with RBL. We don't rock with all these other videos. And I had remembered doing time with authors like Weasel and certain other individuals that were righteous camaradas, righteous brothers, man. You know, they fought with me, not against me. So I didn't have that mindset. I didn't have that hate in my heart for the other side because they were homeboys. And that's what I seen them as, other Norteños. But I guess none of that shit mattered because these are the streets, homie. You know what I mean? They said, you have to be here at least three months, right? So I had to get out and recognize that the streets and prison, youth authority, uh, county jails, all that is different. There's different rules and regulations to this shit, okay? There's different procedures and ways that you carry yourself. And I was just... Starting to learn. I had to adapt to the fact. Um, but I remember one time, one time getting out and walking about with like four of my homeboys. And we're mobbing. I mean, the mobbing. You know, we're mobbing, filming ourselves. And we're going through the Merced Mall, small little mall that it is. And uh, we see four or five bottles walking towards us. And automatically, the fucking wind starts blowing, right? The hairs on the our back of our neck start to rise like a fuck, like going pit bull. So that's our feathers start sticking out like a rooster. And we're about to crow around this motherfucker. It's about to go down, right? Um, there's about to be a fight. Um, and I recognize a guy that I went to school with. And these guys are from RBL, a gang out there in Merced called Rebels Before Locos, allegedly, right? And the whole reasoning behind their name um, was because they oppress they were against us. They didn't oppress us. They never they never won, right? But that they didn't like us, so they were rebels before locals because we were dead in locals. That's a historical fact. Sit down here. I'm going to give you a little glitch out, right? Um, and so we already knew with these guys, with this particular group, it was on. Um, but I remember seeing this one Volta, and I went to school with him. I knew him for several years. So as we started to approach, I told one of the homeboys to trip out. That's that Volta Pegli. I'm going to get at him, right? He was like, let's clack these motherfuckers. Let's trip out. They're homeboys. He said, they're not our homeboys. I said, they're my homeboys, right? I had just got out, so I was still on that North they push, whereas they were on the Barrio push. Later on, it would get a little blurred for me, and I would start Barrioing it. But at this point, I was on the North they push. And so I remember getting at this bottle, and he had done some time too. He was a little bit older than me, so he had did time in county jail. So he knew what time it was as well. And I remember getting at him and not breaking nothing down, homes, because obviously we didn't get down like that. 
but just expressing to him my belief system and what I was into and what I thought the North was and what it meant to me and the cause and how we were all rocking that same agenda under the same bandera and we were pushing that same notion. Walter was like, I'm down with that. So it's good. You guys go your way. We'll go our way. So we all looked at each other like this. And we all went our ways. And I remember the homeboys were feeling some type of way. Of course, when I got back to the hood, they're like, hey, man, this fool was pushing this fucking political agenda north of this. I said, hey, in the end, you guys will find out. You will understand once you're incarcerated exactly the hardships the homeboys go through and how we're up shit creek with no paddle. And so I was scared there's only a couple of us. We need to stick together. Even out here, this is what we need to maintain. This is what we need to do. Um, but there was plenty of other instances where we were going back and forth with, you know, the other side of Merced. I remember one, one day, man, we're chilling right there at the pad. We had just had a party the night before. So I was scared. Everybody was all crudo and fucking menudo was on our mind. And one of the homeboys went to a taco truck, was right down the street on 10th street. And, uh, all of a sudden we hear a shot. <clears throat> we're thinking it's a car backfiring because I was scared. Everyone had a fucked up hoopty back in the days. Regals were everywhere. Right. Um, and then the homeboy comes back with the burrito. And a fucking hole in his hand. Uh, someone from the other side allegedly had shot him. It was back in the days, man. Shit don't count now. And Walter that did, that's not around anyways. But um, he started telling us who it was. And we're like, damn, we're going to get that boot. We're on his headpiece, right? And uh, this was a guy that was out there. And he was pretty known because he was a rapper at the time. But um, we wanted him. We wanted him bad, you know? He was making it his agenda to go after my neighborhood. He was making his agenda to, going after, to go after fellow Northanials. He thought he was a bad motherfucker. Right? He's like, yeah. The wind was about to blow on him, right? So um, we had All Point Bulletin out on this individual. We're looking for him. We were not even thinking about the Norteño on Norteño violence. All we were thinking about is silencing this character, what he had going on, period. And so the homeboy gets shot. The homeboy eats his burrito, goes to the hospital, and do, does what he does. Um, about a month later, we're partying on the west side of the homeboy's pad. My homeboy monkey's pad. We're all chilling. Everyone's kicking it at the hatch. We used to call it the hatch. It was out in the country. When this female comes up to me, she's like, hey, trip out. That fool, you know, the one that everyone's trying to get? Yeah, he's at my homegirl's pad right now, laid up with his old lady. So I was good just having it his way. You know what I mean? Using that motherfucker like that motherfucker hustle and flow. He's like, hey, man, you suck at mine. You suck at mine. I said, is that right? Well, watch out. I'm going to have to go ahead and wiggle over there. So I tell a few of the homeboys that we get ready, right? And we actually take a cruise over there. My whole time going to this pad, I'm thinking to myself, this is it. This is where it all ends. This is where, this is the end of your rainbow gun. This is where you finally are going to be locked up for the rest of your life. Because what you guys are about to do, you got females here. You got several people seeing you leave the party. There's all point bullets. There's witnesses. Now, okay, you are done. And I knew I was fully committed to doing what I was going to do. But I was smart enough to understand that there was too many witnesses, right? So I took it upon myself to get off the car first. Told the homeboys, wait, I got this, bro. I went and knocked on the door and I could hear him in there just ha, sa, sa, sa. And I could hear, no, no, yes, no. And I was like, hey, boom, boom, boom. I knocked on the door and it got quiet. I was like, look, bro, we got you slipping. Motherfucker, we're about to slip the clipping and get you spitting. Allegedly, trip out. Um, your best bet is to jump out that window, bro, because we're coming through. I basically gave him the heads up and he took the highway, right? He jumped out the window and that was that. Um, of course, later on, I would tell the homeboys again, I was looked, like the, looked at like the poop butt. But in the end, and at the end of the day, man, Baltos were pretty much happy because they got to kick back because Sasuke, someone in, was else was in there with his old lady, like Sasuke. So it was all good in the hood. But I will tell you this, um, the red on red was never in me, you know. Ultimately, I ended up losing my career, my Northern career over red on red. You know, I wasn't no punk by any means. I'll handle my business quick. But I never wanted to beat up or fight a fellow Norteño because that's not what we're supposed to do. Now, in other cities nowadays, it's rocking. It's rolling. Eventually, in 1997, a dictation, a mandate came from prison through the GUNCD saying that we were to cease all red-on-red -red hostilities. All We were to end all that bullshit. No matter what type of animosity you had, you're done. That shit was over. Stop it now, right? Don't care how you stop it now, right? Done. So we stopped it now. There was no J.G. Wentworth. I want it now. Now, fuck that. You stop it now, right? And so we ceased all hostilities towards each other, north on north, red on red. Our focus and our objective were the enemigas, the opposition from Southern California. When at that, when at, in, real, in all reality, our enemigas were the Vatos across the street, man, the ones that were really clapping at us. But, of course, that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> that was prison politics leaking off into the streets. 
and we adhered to it, man, because we knew at some point in time we were going to get incarcerated in Saque Wacha. They were going to stick a big old piece of pico de gallo in us. And uh, I like to jump a fence, not have a fence in me. You understand what I'm saying? So um, we seized that. And it was a good thing. Ultimately, it was a good thing because Norteños shouldn't be fighting Norteños. And I believe Sureños, Bulldogs, and all that shouldn't be fighting each other either. You guys are all the same. In the end, none of us should be fighting each other. We're all the same. You know, we might have different mentalities, grew up just a little bit different, man, but we still all eat papas and chorizo and nopales. Well, some of us do. The lucky ones. Anyways, this is how it is. Um, but what I've been hearing nowadays and what I've actually seen a few times is a lot of these youngsters, a lot of the people now are leaning back towards that red on red, man. It's going down. What the Vatos are getting smacked left and right, neighborhood versus neighborhood. I don't understand the, you know, the, the reasoning behind it. I don't know what's really going on and why, but I understand these people are going to have to answer to someone. If you get incarcerated for killing another homeboy, I'm going to tell you the story right here. Watch out. You're going to hear it here first. Exclusive. Gunners Collective. I didn't even know it was a homeboy because watch out, man. He was, the, he had an Edgar going on tight pants and I thought he was just a nobody, bro. So I clapped him. Little did I know he had a big old XIV on his chin. I didn't even know it said XIV. I just thought it said Ebe, right? They don't know. They don't know, or they do know, man, and they're going to play it off tough. Regardless of that fact, man, um, it's starting to happen again, and it's like taking us back. It's like two steps forward and one step back, or or vice versa. You know what I mean? Straight up, now tell me. It's just different because um, whereas a lot of people that made certain sacrifices and were oppressed for so many years and came up out the mud, man, and realized that beating up on your own homeboys or oppressing your homeboys or or the red on red was no good, and it was a righteous move uh, to bring us all together as one under the Norteño Pantera. Now, what do you have? You have the Vatos going back to fighting. You have the Vatos going back to hating on each other, the envy, the individualism, the homeboy favoritism, all that it was instilled in us to quit, to get back to rules and regulations and things that we needed to proceed to, to get that bolsita and to be a solid fucking foundation. Mm -mm, it's over. They're back to fucking clapping each other over a funny hairdo. I can't call it like an alcoholic, but at the end of the day, it's what happening. Every city is different. I could be totally offbeat and say, um, Gunner, you're a baboso. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Homeboys are solid right here. I'm not saying they're solid. I'm just saying, man, I'm noticing a lot more red on red in a lot of cities. I know in Sacramento, motherfucker, it's on and cracking. Um, it's not even more about North than your politics as it is uh, street politics. Street politics are coming into play. It seems like they're taking over. Whereas in my town, back in our days, everything that was dictated to us came from the pinta, pintos, old school brocheros with the fucking whip down to here. Whatever they said went, you know, because we knew that they were the ones pushing behind the behind the walls. They were the ones pushing the movement. They were the ones that were really about it. Everything we were doing on the streets was just little frivolous antics by some youngsters that didn't really know better. Okay, but we knew better enough to do better that when we got incarcerated, man, it was time to fall in line and function and under the guidance and, you know, of the homeboys that put the foundation down. That was it. I felt like I fucking had a little leg up because I went to YA, so I already knew uh, what the structure felt like, how homeboys coming together felt. You know, a lot of my homeboys didn't, so I would try to lace them up the best way I could, but right? that's just how it went. Anyways, you know, the red on red, Norteños versus Norteños, it's happening. It's happening more. I'm starting to see Vatos lose their lose their mentalities. I'm starting to see people die. Bodies are dropping over it. Um, are you going to be the one out there and call yourself a true soldado if you're fucking depleting your own manpower? One never knows does one. Can't call it, but at the end of the day, you got to look yourself in the mirror and know that you smacked your own homeboy from your neighborhood or you smacked your own homeboy from the other side just because, uh, you know what I mean? He stepped on your fucking uh, Cortez's. I don't know. I can't call it at the end of the day. I just know, man, uh, we're not supposed to do red on red. So I'm sitting here like a baboso, non-acting little motherfucker because I did some red on red. Go figure. Anyways, at the end of the day, I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, it's all about going out there struggling and striving for your family. If you're not a gang member, this spill probably doesn't even pertain to you. You're like red on red, blue on blue, green on green. We don't do Amarillo. I'm not tripping my on some hustle flow. You can tell I just watched the movie because I'm referencing it. Anyways, you already know what it is. Um, if you like this, please hit that like and subscribe. If not, you can hit that thumbs down. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. I'm still Grulo. Last night, we did a live on Gunner's Profiles. It went all night long. But watch out. Still Bangladeshi in here. The business and the motherfucking gun never stops. We proceed to the next light. Stop the Norteño and Norteño violence and all violence on brown people. It's not a good look.